Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Sukkah, we are up to Perek Gimel, Mishnah Yud Aleph. Today's Mishnah Yud should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aranbay, Vendadiyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, Leavdir Ben Haim Lachaim, Fed Refua Shalema, Bacha Bat Esther, and Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betor Shachol Yisrael. The Mishnah teaches additional rules about Halel. The Mishnah begins, Makom Shenagul Yichpol, Yichpol. In a place where the people follow the custom to repeat each of the last nine verses of the last chapter of Hallel, one should follow the custom and repeat these verses. Now the Rav explains there are 29 verses in the last Psalm of Hallel, Psalm 118. The first 20 follow a repetitive pattern. In order to maintain this pattern, there is a custom in some communities to repeat each of the last nine verses, which begin, I thank you because you have answered me. The Mishnah continues, Lifshot. If short, and in a place where the custom is to say each of these verses only once, one should follow the custom and say them only once. Levarech aharav, yivarech aharav. In a place where the custom is to recite the blessing after Hallel, one should follow the custom and recite the blessing after Hallel. Now, this is the blessing that begins, Yalalucha, they will praise you, etc. The recitation of this blessing at the end of Hallel is not obligatory but depends on the local practice. The blessing before Hallel. However, is obligatory like any other blessing that must be recited before performing a mitzvah and is not a matter of custom. Again, the Zadarav explains it. For practical halacha, you must check Shulchan Uch and each one based on his custom. Svardim, their halacha, and Ashkenazim, their halacha. The Mishnah says, Akol, Kiminage Medina, everything should be done in accordance with the local custom. The Mishnah now returns to the laws of the four species. Halokeach Lulav Mechavero Beshvit. If one buys a lulav, which refers to the four species, from his friend who was an amaaretz, a person who cannot be trusted to observe certain halachot during Shvit. Now every seventh year, the land in Eretz Yisrael may not be worked. This year is called Shvit or Shemitah. No tenlo etrog bematanav. The buyer must insist that the seller give him the etrog as a gift. If the amaaretz does not want to give him the etrog to him as a gift, the buyer may pay extra for the other species, as the Gemara says on page 39a in Mesechet Sukkah, because he is not allowed to buy it during Shemitah, and the trog that grew during Shemitah is sacred, and any money paid to buy it becomes sacred, it must be treated in a certain way. The rabbis therefore prohibited buying in the trog of Shemitah from an Amaretz, because the Amaretz may not treat the money as he should. Now, produce that gr- grows during Shemitah is sacred. It may only be eaten and not sold except in small amounts or wasted. It is also subject to the laws of Biur, meaning one must give up his ownership of the produce when that species is no longer available in the fields. We spoke about this in Mishnah Masechet Shvit, chapter 7, Mishnah 1, and chapter 8, Mishnah 7. If one sells Shvit produce, the produce retains its sanctity and the money paid for it becomes sacred as well. The money may be used only for buying food, which must also be treated like Shvit produce. An Amaretz who does not know the laws might use the money for some other purpose, or if he does use it to buy food, he might not treat the food as the halacha requires. To prevent these transgressions, the rabbis forbade one to buy shvit produce from an Amaretz. The Mishnah specifies the etrog because the lulav and the simen aravot are just pieces of wood which do not have shvit sanctity. And that is in Mishnah Aleph. Mishnah Yubet now cites two decrees issued by Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai after the second temple was destroyed. The Mishnah begins Barishona originally when the temple still stood. Hayal Ulav Nital Bamigdash Shiva. The Lulav, the four species, was taken in the temple on all seven days of Sukkot. Uba Medina Yomechad and in the provinces outside the temple, it was taken on only one day, the first day of Sukkot. Mishaharab Bet Megdash, when the second temple was destroyed, Hitkin Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai Shiel Ulav Nital Bamidina Shiva Zechel Megdash. Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai instituted that the Lulav be taken even in the provinces on all seven days of Sukkot in commemoration of what was done in the temple, meaning on all seven days of Sukkot except for Shabbat when the sages forbade taking the four species out of concern that one might carry them in the street, the Rishud Rabim, which is biblically prohibited on Shabbat. Now, Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai also issued a decree at that time regarding the biblical prohibition against eating grain of the new crop Chadash before the Omer offering is brought in the temple on the second day of Pesach. Now, the Omer offering was a mincha offering that consisted of barley from the new crop. It must be offered on the second day of Pesach, the 16th of Nisan. Now, the Torah states in Sefer Vaikra, chapter 23, Pasuk 14, Velechem. You shall not eat bread or roasted kernels or plump kernels until this very day, the second day of Pesach, until you bring the offering of your God, the Omer offering. This is the prohibition of eating from the new crop. 
According to biblical law, the new crop is permitted as soon as the Omer offering is brought. Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai established what must be done after a temple was destroyed and the Omer offering was no longer brought. And he decreed that the new crop is forbidden the entire day of waving, meaning the entire second day of Pesach, when their Omer offering used to be waved in the temple. Now the Omer offering has to be waved in the four directions of the compass. Therefore it is called Omer Atinufa, the Omer of waving, and the day on which it is brought is called Yom Anifechemet Omer. The day of your waving the Omer. Now, in, in the absence of the temple, when the Omer offering is not brought, biblical law permits eating the new crop early in the morning of the 16th of Nisan. Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai, though, decreed that, re that it remains prohibited until nightfall. He was concerned that if the Jewish people would al be allowed to eat the new crop early in the morning of the 16th, they might continue to do so even after the temple is rebuilt. That would be a biblical transgression because when the temple is standing, the new crop remains forbidden until after the Omer is offered. So to prevent this transgression, Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai decreed that one may not eat the new grain until the end of the day, by which time the Omer offering will certainly have been brought when the temple is rebuilt. As the Gemara explains on page 41a in Masechet Sukkah. That is in Rabotai of Tariz Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Amen v'Amen.